Amen. So today we're going to focus on a divine appointment. You know, divine appointments happen all the time. You may not always see the hand of God working in your life, but I assure you, divine appointments have happened in your life. And you know, as we go through the days of, of, of the challenges that we are in and things that we face and hurts and hang-ups and problems and challenges, I just want you to realize and remember today, first of all, you may be going through something difficult, but I want you to know that God can use that and is using whatever you're going through to set you up for his purpose in your life, and that is always to bring you into a greater place of blessing, a greater place of favor in the Lord. Can you say amen? And so as we talk about divine appointments today, we're going we're gonna to see a couple of clips actually from um, the series as we focus in on an amazing divine appointment. And it has to do with the woman, with the story that we know as the Samaritan woman at the well of Jacob. And, uh, and the well of Jacob was dug a couple of thousand years prior to the time that Jesus showed up and, and met this woman at this well. And we'll talk all about that in a moment. But the, the thing that we have to first recognize today that I want you to take home is simply this. Sometimes we think we've had the great idea that it's time we should go to church. Have you ever said to your spouse or your loved one, you know, I think we should go to church, you know? And there's just something in you that's prompting you to, I just feel like we need that in our life. And um, I just want to remind you today that that prompting actually wasn't your idea. That though sometimes it feels like we choose God, today's message is to confirm to you it is God that chooses us. Amen. He brought you here today on purpose because he wanted to speak to you today, this Easter Sunday morning. He wanted to be able to assure you that he hasn't forgotten where you are or who you are and that he has a divine purpose in your life and he has made an appointment with you. And do you know what that appointment was? It was this Sunday morning. Do you know that you showed up on time to your appointment? Congratulations. So awesome. And it is a divine appointment. And we see God's hand moving in a divine way throughout the entire scripture. Think about the, the Romans during the time of Mary and Joseph when Jesus was about to be born. If the Romans had not have said that all people have to go to their city of origin to be counted in a census, if that great idea had not happened, then Mary and Joseph would not have been in Bethlehem, and our Savior would not have matched up with the prophetic statements about him that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. The problem is, how do we get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem on time to have the Savior? I'll tell you how. It's called divine appointments. God can line up things, even when it's the government. And what the enemy means... For our harm, God can use and will use and does use for our good. And before we're too quick to give the credit to all the evil forces around us, let's always stop and always remember how powerful it is that God is working in our lives. And we may not yet realize it, but God has a divine appointment. I've noticed that we can't go anywhere these days without running into somebody and we know that that was a divine appointment. And that's what today is about, the divine hand of God in all of our lives. It's just hard to deny that God's hand isn't always active in the human affairs of our lives. There's something supernatural also, not just when he leads us to things, but it's something supernatural when somebody comes to faith in Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's rare that you would ever just wake up and say, oh, I want to be a Christian. It's usually that God shows up in your life in a way that he has already arranged. Somebody's been praying for you. A family member's been thinking about you and praying for you. Somebody invites you. You see a website, a billboard. A, you run into somebody. I've known people that have told me 
you know, just before I came to this church, I just kept running into champions everywhere. It was driving me crazy. And the thing is, it is good because it means that God has a divine appointment. I want you to internalize that today, that he has this appointment with you today. You're here. The thing is that there are so many times, as we will see in this first clip I want to show you, it seems like sometimes in our lives, the choosing is done by somebody else. <sighs> <sighs> This is the spot, my sons. Shalom, my friend. I, I don't know that word. It's something my family says. It's a greeting of peace. You won't find much of that here, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm Jacob. I'm Yassib. Yassib, I would offer you something to drink, but... As you can see, we have just begun work on our well. You bought this land from the sons of him. For only 100 kesida, can you believe it? <laughs> I believe it every time the princes of this land cheat another foreigner. You will cost the day you pay that 100 kesita. And what do you think would have been a fair price? Zero kesita, zero goats, zero... We have 12 sons to work the land, and once we strike water... You will never strike water. Yes, the recent rain makes the land look lush, but... The underground river runs around the mountain, not up it. Our God takes care of us. This is Canaan. The gods are not nice here. <laughs> we won't be here that long. We are sojourners. Ah, and what are you looking for? A land our God promised my grandfather, Abraham. Your grandfather? You ever notice how the gods are always promising us things, but we never really see them happen? Sometimes it takes generations. Ah, <laughs> suit yourself. So, what is this uh, god of yours called, anyway? El Shaddai. I've never heard of him. Not many people have, but I think someday they will. You have no home? Where's your temple for this god? He has no temple. So where do you worship him? We build altars wherever we go. And you do not carry him with you? <laughs> no. There are no carved idols of him. So he's invisible? Yes. Well, usually. There was one time he broke my hip. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I've heard enough. Of all the gods you could possibly choose from, you pick an invisible god whose promises take generations to come true, who, who makes you sojourn in strange places, and he broke your hip. That is a strange choice. <laughs> oh, immigrants. We didn't choose him. Chose us. You know, on the side of a mountain, when water is supposed to run the opposite way, do you know that God can put a well wherever he tells you to dig? And to see that and to recognize that God is always intervening in our lives in a miraculous way. And sometimes you have to have miraculous eyes to see the miraculous power. Sometimes we're so tuned in to the things of this world that we literally miss the fact that God is continuously doing supernatural things in our lives and all around us all the time. I want to bring your attention to a story, as I said, about the Samaritan woman who met Jesus at that very well a few thousand years later. Now it's become an established place. It's a, it's a landmark for the Jews. They know it well. And I'm going to pick up in verse 7 out of John chapter 4. And the Bible says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? For his disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks, that is asking you for a drink, uh, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living, wa living water. 
Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself? And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a spring of living water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and need to come here to drink or to draw water. And in verse 16, he says to her, woman, go call your husband and come back. And she says to him, I have no husband. He says, you're right when you say you have no husband. And the fact is, you've had five husbands. And the man that you now have is not your husband. What you've said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. You know, when Jesus, let's leave that reading right there. When Jesus begins to step into our lives, it's never when you're squeaky clean and everything's awesome. And by the way, you'll never be squeaky clean and everything will be awesome. That'll just literally never happen. But he often steps in and tells us what's really happening in our life. A lot of times we just live our lives as though we're kind of uh, able to kind of hide the mess under, under, you know, the water. We're like the duck who's floating along on top, but underneath we're paddling. And it's like this woman, she was just having an interaction with somebody, and all of a sudden Jesus started to read her mail. And I just want us to recognize today, he knows what's going on in our life. And he knows not in a way to condemn us, but he knows what's going on in on in our life in a way to bring his grace and his forgiveness and his purpose into our lives. You see, that day, no one in their right mind would have been sitting at that well at noon in the blazing heat. It was a very unusual situation. But as the discussion continues, it looks more and more like a divine appointment. Would you give me a drink? Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan, and a woman. I'm sorry. I should have said please. You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? Why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come at noon in the heat, as you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I, I'd still like a drink of water if, if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Would, except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. 
Besides, what do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Long story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah. Exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? I've never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank him, even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here. That it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? <sighs> Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am He. This Messiah, I am He. Isn't it just like God to do things this way? Surely God definitely would take great pleasure in revealing His messianic identity, the fact that He's the Messiah to the very first person he ever told was that woman that day at that well. And by the way, that conversation is the longest conversation Jesus ever had with anybody that was written down in the Bible. She was seemingly a nobody, seemingly an outcast. And Jesus, first of all, went right to, to ministering to her as he does with you and I. But sometimes we have all the excuses in the world why we can't connect to God just as she had. And Jesus is here to tell us today, if you would just push through some of those excuses and if you would find a way to connect, God is leading you. He's guiding you. There are folks here this morning that, you know, as you live your life and you're busy and you're doing what you do, that perhaps, though coming to church is something you want to do, it's, it's just it's something that happens once in a while. But I just want to tell you that, first of all, good job for being here today. But secondly, I just want to tell you that if you keep looking, you will find. If you keep knocking, the door is going to be open to you. If you keep asking, the answers are going to come just as they did for that woman that day. What divine. What divine appointments have happened in your life so far? As you look back right now, I want you to just bring up in your memory what happened 
that sent you down a path that ultimately led to God doing something remarkable in your life. I'm, I'm just betting that everybody in this room, somewhere along the way, God had to arrange some set of circumstances for you to have this remarkable interaction with God. Could you pull that up in your memory right now? You notice how our free will seems to intersect with the will of the one who works all things together for his purposes. And let me ask you another question. How does it feel when you see God's plans coming together in your life or in the life of those that you might be praying for? Isn't it something that is so amazing? You'll never forget what it feels like when you see God drawing you, you see God changing you, you see God doing miracles in your life. It may not be overnight, but over time. And I challenge you today to recognize there is a divine call on your life today, and that is to really let Jesus lead you, guide you in every part of your life. There's one more clip that I'd like to share with you this morning before we close our service out. And... It really just speaks to this. When divine appointments come to us or someone we love, it makes us just stand back in awe. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. <laughs> but he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. And you know these things because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon, just the heart. <laughs> you promise? I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> Your water! You forgot your um. Papsi, your man, you told me everything I ever did! <laughs> um, Rabbi, we got food. What would you like? Ah. I have food to eat that you do not know about. Who got you food? Wait a minute. You told her? Mm -hmm. And she can tell others? What food? My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Y you told her who you are? Mm -hmm. So does that mean? It means we're going to stay here a couple of days. It's been a long time of sowing, but the fields are ripe for harvest. And so it's time. Let's go. 
Yes! <laughs> That was a touching scene, wasn't it? Because only Jesus can see through all of the challenges and pain in our life. But when he sees it, he brings healing. I want to make a couple of suggestions to you this morning before we send you away for your Easter family time. I want to make this suggestion to you right now. Since God Almighty went to all the not really trouble for him, but we'll call it trouble. He went through all the trouble to have a, an appointment with you this morning. Here. I wonder if you might make an appointment with him next week and make a decision, you know, if God is really drawing me in, guilt. I just need to know more. I feel like there'd be peace in my life. I feel like things would make so much more sense. I want to assure you, you're right. But you know, we don't just have a baby and put it out on the doorstep. You need to be in the house. You need to be in the family. You need to grow. And next week, we'll be doing part two based on our series. And it's going to be so beautiful. You won't believe it. I invite you to come and be part of that next week. Who knows? Maybe being in God's house might become a habit. You know, there are some habits that aren't good ones. This is a good one. Let Jesus start a work in your life. In fact, he's already started a work in your life. He's already called you and you're here. I believe God wants to touch you in a way that goes beyond just on Easter Sunday. I think he's got some great plans for you. Great plans for your family. Great plans for your future. We're so glad today that you've been with us on Champion TV. You know, there's nothing like celebrating the presence of God in person. So we invite you to bring your family, come to Champion Church. We have amazing children's ministry and all kinds of things going on. Check us out online at champion.church. And remember, God is with you always.